Let's keep clapping for the merciful God, the one who answers prayers, who will answer your prayer today. Just clap in advance for that which God has prepared for you. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Please be seated in his wonderful presence. People of God, I'd like to please encourage you to go on YouTube and all the other platforms that we have to listen to the message for the first service. For you to have a full understanding of what God has in store for you today, you need to start from the message of the first service. I know that those that are online, they usually stay for the two. But if you're here physically, please, I beseech you by the message of God, for your own sake and for God's sake, go on YouTube, just spend about 30 minutes to listen to the message sent to us from the throne room of God to help us in our walk in this part of the dispensation. It gives me so much pleasure to invite to minister again our father, our mentor, uh, Dr. Oke Unuzo, who is here with Pastor Mrs. Miriam, his sweetheart of many years. Let's clap for Jesus as it comes to continue the message led by the Spirit. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Okay. My wife and I are pleased to be here to share fellowship. Amen. Okay, we, we, we'll take the hymn. We are marching to Zion. We are marching to Zion.
Father, here we are again. And may your Holy Spirit breathe your very life into us. Lord, we want to be one with you. Just like our Lord Jesus Christ promised. We want to walk with you. We want to obey you. We want to fulfill the delights of your heart. That when life is over, we will spend eternity with you. This is our heart's desire. May it please you to grant it to us today. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you. You may be seated. Led by the Spirit of God. In the first service, we were looking at how Peter had the courage, the boldness, the confidence to admit Gentiles into what was predominantly a Jewish church. And all that was because he heard the voice of God. And when he was challenged, he had this answer. The Spirit bade me go. The Spirit made me go. Now we come to look at all the people in the early church of the New Testament. We come to the conversion of the Apostle Paul. Come with me to Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11, from verses 9 to 15. But the voice answered me again from heaven, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. Now this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. At that very moment, three men stood before the house where I was, having been sent to me from Caesarea. Then the Spirit told me to go with them, doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house who said to him, Send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, as upon us at the beginning. Now, this is the main story of our meditation today. It is centered on that powerful word. The Spirit bade me go with them, doubting nothing. In 1970, Dr. David Duplessis, a South African-born evangelist, who was sitting astride the global charismatic movement as well as the World Ecumenical Movement, wrote a book of the same title, The Spirit Bade Me Go, ostensibly to answer his critics who wondered why a true Pentecostal was working with Father Killian MacDonnell to give birth to the Catholic charismatic movement. As we go through the scriptures, we see several examples of the same statement. The Spirit bid me go. And once we have those matching orders, we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. We follow the Spirit. And I want to stop first at uh, Ananias, the prophet of Damascus, in Acts chapter 9 from verse 10. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. 
And Ananias went his way and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. Then all who heard were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those who called on this name in Jerusalem and has come here for that purpose, so that he might bring them bound to the chief priests? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that this Jesus is the Christ. Amen. Here is a man mentioned only twice. Here, in Paul's immediate testimonies of his conversion, and also in Acts chapter 22. Now, I want you to think about this problem that Ananias was confronted with. Suppose you were him, okay? Suppose you were him. This is a man that you heard, you know, is coming to arrest all the Christians and, and take them bound to Jerusalem. But then you hear a voice that said, Ananias, say, yes, Lord. I'm sending you to the street called Straight. And there you'll find the man, Saul of Thassos. I want you to pray for him, let him be filled with the Holy Ghost, and commission him to the task I have for him. And Ananias said, Lord, you don't understand. This man, he is here on a mission. He is here to arrest us and take us bound to Jerusalem and to jail. And the Lord said to him, I know that, but that man, that same man is a chosen vessel unto me. Now, you see, when a man hears a voice from heaven, when a man hears spiritual communication, all his fears must disappear. All his fears must disappear. And he must arise to do as the Spirit has said. Ananias, when God said to him, I, that man, I have already told him how much he must suffer for my sake. He is the one taking people, killing people, uh, uh, persecuting them, jailing them. Oh yes, he's going to go through the same things himself. The man did not hesitate. This is the power of spiritual communication. He rose immediately and went to the house. Now look at how he addressed him. Brother Saul. He didn't know him before. He didn't know him before. But the word, the communication by the Spirit of God, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus Christ who appeared to you on the way. He already has the story. He already has the story. The Lord Jesus who appeared to you, on the, he has sent me to you that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. It is important, it is very important to know the order. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, I gave my life to Christ in the scripture union. And anyone who knows the scripture union you know, knows in those days, in those 70s, they were not at the forefront of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. No, they, they were concentrating on um, evangelizing the people, getting them uh, uh, established in Christ, teaching them how to live godly. But they didn't uh, 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 enter into the experience of baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so... I received my first experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit as a Russian mighty wind. I remember the day very clearly. It enveloped me. And I kept saying, oh Lord, 
Oh Lord, what will you have me do? What will you have me do? But because, but because the people who counseled us, what the man said to us, well, you don't really have to speak in tongues because um, not everybody speaks in tongues. So I really didn't uh, go forward. I didn't speak in tongues that day. But I knew I had an experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But now, one day, to know how God works, one day, I attended a crusade, okay? The evangelist and I, we don't know each other. And I was standing at the back wall, very back wall of the auditorium. And he wanted to pray for people to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And he pointed like this, you, come and help me pray for these people. Okay, there were quite a few of us on the road. And they were doing like, me, he said, no. Me, he said, no. Me, I said, no. I said, me, he said, yes, you. So, I arose and went. But as I was going, the devil was saying to me, you that are going, have you received? I said, of course, of course I've received. So I've received. He said, do you speak in tongues? I said, you don't have to speak in tongues. You have I have received, I have received. So I went forward and I started to lay hands on the people to receive the Holy Spirit. And the devil would be saying to me, remove all those empty hands, there's nothing inside the hand. <laughs> I struggled with that thing all that night, but I kept praying, I kept praying. You know, I struggled with it that night. But it was because it was an independent confirmation. I did, the man didn't know me from Adam. But he pointed to me. So when I got home that night, I said, Lord, if speaking in tongues is evidence, like the Bible says it is, of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I need the evidence. I need the evidence. Then I started to pray. And then Paul Ginodo came to town. You know, Reverend Paul Ginodo, he came to town to lead a mission to the university, a revival to the university on the Holy Spirit. So I went and met him. I said, I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but I don't speak in tongues. I would like to speak in tongues also. And he said to me, come every night, because I don't know the night that God will uh, visit you. He said, come every night. I went the first night, it didn't happen. I went the second night, it didn't happen. I went the third night, then I started speaking in tongues that third night. And then I studied, I studied the whole phenomenon, the whole experience. And the Bible says, he that is, speaks in an unknown tongue, his understanding, he doesn't understand what he's saying. But albeit in the spirit, he speaks what? Mysteries. And I said to myself, I want to speak uh, mysteries. I want to speak mysteries. Because the tongues is given to us to edify. He, said, he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. And how do you edify your, yourself? You build up yourself in the inner man. If you read my book, Pathway to Conversational Prayer, speaking in tongues there is, is described as building your spiritual sensitivity. In other words, you want to be able to be sharp to pick up spiritual communication. And so, as you speak in tongues, your spirit is praying. And the spirit of God is praying through you. And so, as a result, you and the spirit of God are in direct uh, relationship. That's why the Bible says in Jude chapter 20, building up yourself in your most holy faith. Praying in the what? Holy Ghost. Then do you know the other thing that uh, made me begin to really speak, seek to speak in tongues? The Bible says in uh, uh, um, Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27, it said, for we do not know how we should pray or what we should pray, okay? We do not know what, how, what we should pray for as we ought, like the King James puts it. But the Spirit helps our infirmities. And then the Spirit himself, he knows what to pray for, for he makes intercession for the saints with groaning and praying in what? The will of God. 
Okay? That's what's important. You see, the Spirit, He makes intercession for the saints, praying in the will of God. And then I came to the conclusion that on any matter I want to pray for, when I pray in tongues, I pray through the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit will pray according to the mind of God. And that is a great asset. But don't forget, you know, I, I like to add this for those uh, who may not know. That you see, since you don't know what you're saying when you pray in tongues, you might um, say, find this book and say, Lord, I want this book. Okay? And then you start to pray in tongues. But what you didn't know is that the Spirit is saying, make sure he doesn't get this book. So you see, if, if he tells you what you are praying, you will not pray again. <laughs> Take a young man that sees a girl. He likes the girl. Then he goes to pray. Oh, Shina Manasela. What he didn't know is that, say, Lord, please separate us permanently. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the beauty of it. Even when you discover what you are praying, you are happy. Because that is the mind of, uh, yes, because you are committed, you are sold to the mind of God. That's why we pray in tongues. A lot of people don't know why we pray in tongues. We want to be at the center of the divine will. So that our lives will fulfill destiny. That which is in the heart of God for us from the foundations of the earth. Can somebody say amen to that? And so you can sense, they said, Paul, brother Paul, the Lord that that sent me to you. He wants you to be saved, to be baptized, and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so I want to urge anyone under the sound of my voice, you, ha you have not been baptized with the Holy Spirit, you do not speak in tongues. Oh no, you are losing a lot. You are losing a lot. You need to begin to pray in tongues for your own sake. There is also another benefit. Okay, there may be needs that you may have next week. Okay, but unknown to you, you have to put in the request today. You have to put in the request today. And when you begin to pray in an unknown tongue, the spirit, because he knows all things, he will put in the request for you. He will put in the request for you. So that um, the holy, the, the, the heaven will package the answer to your prayer. Now, when we look at Ananias, we can see that it takes great courage to do what he did, but that courage is made easy by a voice from the Lord. And what I always say to believers, don't forget that if there is a lion out there on the road, and the Holy Spirit says to you, when you get out of that gate, make a right turn, you say, Lord, that's where the lion is. I know. He said, I know, but make a right turn. You might make that right turn with trepidation. Your heart is pounding. And then when you get there, they say, oh, the lion just moved away. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, the reason, this is why we need divine communication in our lives. Everybody needs divine communication. Because you cannot see ahead. I cannot see ahead. You cannot see ahead. Only God can see ahead. And he is the only one. Who can guide us? So it's important, you know. By the way, that's why I brought this book, you know, to introduce to you. It originated here because I did a talk years ago on spiritual intelligence. And Pastor I.D. sent me a transcript of that, of that talk. And that's what metamorphosed into this book. Can somebody say praise the Lord? <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, yes. Now, well, when we look at... Um, other examples in the Bible. You see why you need, you and I need divine communication. I want to take you to Acts chapter 16. Paul and the Macedonian invitation. Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. 
Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. This is one of those scriptures that tell us clearly that spiritual intelligence is, is indispensable to life, pa particularly for all those who minister, who work, or do business. Spiritual intelligence is indispensable to life. The power of SI to direct, redirect to the goals set for us in eternity by God Almighty is mind-boggling. Oftentimes, someone would ask me, but what should I do if I do not get an SI on a matter? I say, ah, you better wait. You better wait. It's better to wait. Because here is the answer. Wait until you get one. Here are four stops for the Apostle Paul. Forbidden by the Holy Spirit to go to Asia. You see? Forbidden. The Holy, they wanted to go to Asia. It's an open place. He said, no, you're not going to Asia. Okay, so we came down to Mycenae. Forbidden by the Holy Spirit to go into Bithynia. Yes. Okay, should we go? No, you're not going to Bithynia. Now, now, you might wonder, to what purpose, to what end is all that, all that uh, 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 control? You will soon see. Now, at trust, they get the signal to go to Macedonia. The Apostle Paul has a dream or revelation and he sees a man, and he knows the man. You see, this is the thing about um, spiritual intelligence. You, you, you didn't see a man, and you can't tell where he came from. Mm -mm. He saw a man in that re revelation, and he knew the man was from Macedonia. He said, I saw a man of Macedonia come to me. And the man of Macedonia didn't say, I need you. Uh -uh. He gave him a specific message. Come over to Macedonia and help us. Yes! And, and, and then the Bible says, as soon as he narrated this experience to us, we immediately knew that God was calling us to minister in what? Macedonia. Yes! So we didn't have to now wonder, no, we have a clear direction. We have a clear directive. Okay? Now, the question is, to what purpose? Now, there are two churches from Macedonia, in the Bible, two churches from Macedonia, their testimonies are awesome. The first is the Philippian church, and the second is the Thessalonian church. These are churches of Macedonia. These are churches of Macedonia. Now, let us take a testimony from the churches of Macedonia that Paul wrote to, second, to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 5. He said, now I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God in his kindness has done through the churches in Macedonia. They are being tested by many troubles and are very poor. But they are also filled with abundant joy, which has overflowed in rich generosity. For I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford, but far more. And they did it of their own free will. They begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing in the gift for the believers in Jerusalem. They even did more than we had hoped. For their first action was to give themselves to the Lord and to us, just as God wanted them to do. No, no, no. no. The Apostle Paul, they were persuading other churches, pleading, begging, pushing. But these Macedonian people, oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. They were the ones pleading for the opportunity. Even though they were under trouble, they were persecuted, they were the ones saying, we want to support the church in Jerusalem. The Macedonian churches, they had insight, they had understanding about Christ-centered Christianity. They gave themselves first to Christ. And then they were ready to make whatever sacrifice is needed so that the kingdom will prosper in their lives and through them. This is what makes giving easier. When a man has first given himself to Christ. And then he's ready to give whatever else that God demands of him. The Philippian church was the very first, you see. They were the very first to support the apostle Paul financially. Okay, so now, now, 
a man is ministering, okay, and he wants to go into Asia, and the Lord was like, don't, no, 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 no. He wants to go into Beth, no. He wants to go into my, ah. so, Then Macedonia. What he didn't know was that this would be the people to support him in the ministry. You see, they don't tell you things like that. They, if, if they had called him and said, um, um, I want you to visit the Macedonian church because they're going to be supporting you in the future. They, they, you, you will say you have a reason for going there. But all they said is, come over to Macedonia and help us. That's all. That's all. But unknown to him, these people were to be the pillars of his work. Look at um, Philippians chapter 4 from verse 15. As you know, the Apostle Paul was writing to them. You Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news and then traveled on from Macedonia. No other church did this. Even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. At the moment, I have all I need and more. I am generously supplied with the gifts you sent me with Epaphroditus. They are a sweet smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Can somebody say amen to that? The Lord knew that Paul would need encouragement and support. So he directed him to go minister in Macedonia to raise a people with a passion for missions and who know that missions cost money. And not only that, they are willing. They are not, nobody persuaded them of their own free will to support the apostle in all his work. Now, the Thessalonian church, they had a testimony of a different kind. The, the Bible talks about of an exceedingly growing faith as revealed in 2 Thessalonians 1, 3 to 5. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith is growing exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. The Thessalonians, they were suffering grave persecutions, but they were right in their love. They were right in their patience and their faith and their fortitude. In spite of everything they went through, they did not waver. Oh, my brethren, when you, when, you, when you walk in ministry and you are, are connected with a people who understand what it means to follow Christ, a people who have no reservations in making sacrifices to prosper the work of the kingdom of God, a people who will go out of their way to pray, to give, to do whatever it needs, to expand the kingdom of God in the lives of men. Oh, that's a great encouragement. That's a great encouragement. That is an awesome, awesome encouragement. And I dare say that uh, my wife and I have been greatly encouraged by the city of David. Can you say amen to that? <laughs> Indeed. The Macedonian churches were to prove to be a pillar of strength for the beleaguered apostle Paul in all his troubles. And it is so, so comforting to find kindred spirit 
who see the struggle for the kingdom of God the way you see it and who are ready to throw all their weight behind the effort to actualize the kingdom of God in the lives of men. You see, the, the kingdom of God is, is not really buildings. I know we are building the Trinity Tower, but the kingdom of God is not Trinity Tower. You know? No. The kingdom of God is not Trinity Tower. Trinity Tower is just a place where we will gather together to continue to learn how to grow spiritually. The kingdom of God is you. Because Jesus said the kingdom of God is where? Inside. It is the reality. It is when you go home and the Holy Spirit is controlling your life and, your, and Jesus, your love for Jesus determines what you do, where you go, what you say, how you do your business. That is the kingdom of God. That is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not the building. Do you know why the kingdom of God is not the building? We won't take it to heaven. No matter how wonderful that building ends up being, no matter how magnificent, we won't take it to heaven. But what we will take to heaven, humility, kindness, godliness, that's what we are going to take to heaven. That's the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom of God. And so, when we, when we uh, uh, give money, for Trinity Towers or for whatever project we have in the church. It is not the money that is going to take us to heaven. It is the obedience. You see? So if God tells me to give 100 naira, if I give 50 naira, I will lose. You see? You see, what is going to, what is going to take me to heaven and, and, and give me commendation before God is the obedience. Now, it's not just the obedience. It's the joy you know, so, so, so when he tells me to give that 100 naira, I'm so excited. I have an opportunity to give. This is what the kingdom of God is really all about. You know, people who are so transformed that they are ready to bring glory and honor to God in their lives. No matter what the situation or circumstances. That's how a man, he can have 200 naira in his bank account. And then they, 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 there is a need. And the Holy Spirit says, I hope you are hearing about that need. You say, yes, so, but you know I only have a... Uh, yes, that's enough. Just uh, give it to... Hey, Lord, remember that we don't have any... Uh, say, mm, say oh, yes, I know, I know. See, that, 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 is, that is how people experience miracles in their lives. That's how people experience miracles in their lives. Because it, they're not it's getting miracles because of the money. No, it's not the money. It is the obedience. It is the obedience that triggers the miracle. I was sitting in a church. Um, um, the preacher told a very strange story. He said that in Yoruba land, that um, when you bring um, um, a gift to Kabiesi, that he can sit down and receive your gift. You know? But that there's a gift you will bring. And Kabiesi will say, you say to Kabiesi, I brought you something. He say, where is it? Ah, Kabiesi. He cannot enter the palace. Ah, you have to come out and... Uh. So the preacher said to us, now, I want you to, to, to give something so that the KBAC of KBAC will get up to yes. So when he said that, the Holy Spirit will spark to me. I hope you know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And so and so I wrote that check. I wrote that check that day. I wrote that check. And I dropped it. And it brought unbelievable miracles into my life. It's, a, it's not the money. It's not the amount. It is the obedience. You see, when I was trying to, to start off life support, I remember I went to a meeting and the spirit, I, saw, I said to him, Lord, you remember you said you build this hospital? He said, yes. Empty your pocket. Empty, yes, empty your all into the offering. When I emptied that day, I thought the hospital would start the next day. It didn't start too. It didn't start. You know, because that's the mistake many people make. 
You give one offering, you think they should break the whole bank for you. <laughs> you know, and, and, and then I got to another meeting similar to, I said, Lord, what about this? He said, empty again. You know, there comes a time where you're careful what trousers you're going to church with. <laughs> you know, I emptied again. But you know, it didn't happen immediately. Then one day, I was driving it down in Kurudu Road, and he said to me, Life Support Medical Center is ready. Call it forth, call it forth. And I called it, Life Support Medical Center, come forth. Suddenly, I had favor from the banks. Before, they were asking me for collateral. I said, if I had collateral, would I come here? You see, God is awesome. But it is not the money. Please, it's not the money. It is the obedience. Because that's what triggers. And that's what God is looking for. Men and women, once they hear the voice of God, they're sold. That's what SI is about. And the reason is, you can say to a man or a woman, do yourself a favor. Do what God is uh, telling you. Yes, do yourself a favor. Do what God is telling you. The reason is, he has the reward. He has the reward before he will ask you for the seed. I've even heard that before. The Spirit of God said to me, I have, I have the harvest. I don't have the seed. And a God that is just cannot produce harvest without a seed. He says, yes, yes, you need to put the seed. You need to put the seed. I have the harvest. It's amazing because spiritual intelligence, it, 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 it helps you and I self-correct. It helps us to, to begin to walk in accordance in accordance with the mind of God for every situation so that we can be blessed. It is for your benefit. It is for my benefit. And that's why if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you do not speak in tongues, it's your loss. It is your loss. Because the more you speak in tongues, the more you are able to capture what the Spirit is saying to you. And there must come a time when that 2 Corinthians 13, 14 will be actualized in your life. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And what is the next one? The communion. What does that mean? The dialogue. Dialogue. You have to have dialogue with the Holy Spirit. He said it should abide with you. You know? And if you want to see dialogue at its best, join Samuel and come to the house of Jesse where he was choosing king. Because when he saw Eliab, he said to God, the anointed of the Lord is before him. And God said, Samuel, ah, you are looking at his uh, external. No, I look at the heart. God does not see as man sees. Man sees on the outside. God sees the heart. Now, follow up that dialogue. When um, Shama then came, Samuel kept his opinion to himself. He only said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen this. Okay? And then he brought a third one. The Lord has not chosen. He brought a fourth one. The Lord has not chosen. He brought a fifth one. A sixth one. The Lord has not chosen. Now, can you imagine if Samuel didn't, wasn't able to hear God? You see, he would have poured the oil on the sixth person. Because they only brought six people. So, Lord, if you haven't chosen the first five, then it has to be the sixth one. He will pour the oil on the wrong person. But because they still heard, the Lord has not chosen this. Then he had to say to Jesse, are these all the boys? Oh, Jesse said, there's still one small boy. He's uh, looking. Uh, Someone said, you better bring him up because we won't sit down until he comes. And as soon as David appeared, what did God say? Arise anoint him for this is he that's the man that is what made david till today israel is nation of israel regards david as their founding father how did god describe him a man after my own yes but how did samuel identify him in spiritual intelligence oh yes you can't make a choice about life without the spirit of God telling you because you never see tomorrow you never see tomorrow you know that's what I say to young men looking for wife or, or young women looking for husband I said don't, don't choose 
just with your eyes, oh. <laughs> you know, they asked a young man, they asked a young man, um, what do you want in a wife? He said, I need a girl that speaks English very well, very, very well, like uh, Queen Elizabeth. It's okay, very good. So they sent one angel to find him a, a girl that speaks English very well. And, uh, yeah. He laughs in English. <laughs> yeah. But then what he didn't know that was that when they quarreled, the, boy, the guy was saying, silly boy. Silly boy. Ah, a million quid, silly boy. Silly boy. That's English proper. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Everybody needs that spiritual intelligence so that you don't enter something that you cannot handle. You don't go into places where you will be, you, the thing will bury you by itself. The Almighty God, He has a knowledge, a full knowledge of where you and I are going. Now, I will not finish this message until I've mentioned the ground rule of spiritual intelligence. You will find it in 1 Kings 13, I will tell the story because of time. Very quickly. There's the prophet from Judah. He goes to uh, Samaria with a message from the Lord that the altar will be broken, that Josiah will be born, and he will desecrate the whole place. And the king said, arrest him. And the king froze. And then Jeroboam said to him, please, I beg Please pray for me. And so he prays, and the king's hand is withdrawn. Wow. That's power. And the king said, come home with me. He said, ah, 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 ah. I can't come home with you. Then he made the mistake. He said, they warned me before I came that I must not drink here. I must not eat here. I must go back from a different route that I came. I see then he left. But what did that give rise to? It exposed him to seduction by a lying spirit. The prophet from Samaria, I don't, they didn't tell us his motive, but I can imagine what his motive was. How can God leave me here and go and bring a prophet from uh, Judah? Yes, perhaps he was jealous. But there is some statement in that scripture. He said when he got to the man of God, he said, are you the man of God? He said, yes. Are you the one that came to? He said, yes. He said, oh, come home with me. Said, ah! They told me not to do that. He said, ah, I'm a man of God. Uh, uh, an angel spoke to me that you can come with me. Now, that's the ground rule. When they spoke to him, an angel didn't speak to him. They spoke to him direct. You see? He spoke to you direct. And then somebody comes and says, an angel spoke to me that you should come with me. Okay, then ask the person who spoke to you first. You see, these are the ground rules. He said, should I go with him now? Should I go with him now? Uh -uh. They didn't gain say. They were not on equivocal. When they gave you your marching orders, they said, don't eat here. Don't drink here. You don't need to go and ask them again. Now, but don't forget that this is a desert region. The man must be exhausted. The man must be tired. The man must be hungry. But you cannot violate that ground rule because it is the same anointing that empowered you that protects you. The same that empowered you is the same that protects you. And if you violate it, ah, then you are at risk. That's why SI is so powerful. SI, spiritual intelligence is so powerful. Once you have heard what God wants and what he says, then whatever may be happening there, just follow, follow, because that's where your safety is. That's where your safety is. So it's important for you and I to know that even in this situation, even in all kinds of circumstances, God wants you and I to know that we can hear the voice of God. And no matter how complicated this whole thing is, he will walk us through that wilderness and we will come out singing to the glory of our God. And so I challenge every believer under the sound of my voice, have you, have you been seeking the will of God in your life? 
Then ask God to speak to you. It is your, it is your privilege as a child of God to have the communion of the Holy Spirit. Don't make decisions with your mind because I tell people the intellect, it has limitations. It knows some of the past. It knows some of the present. It has no knowledge of the future. Only God sees the future. That's why we need SI. That's why we need spiritual intelligence. So that we can walk by the Spirit. That's why the Bible says in um, uh, um, Galatians 5.25, if we live by the Spirit, then let us also what? Walk by the Spirit. Bow your head and let us pray. Spiritual in this intelligence is indispensable to life. The apostle Peter was able to break barriers because he said, the Spirit, he bade me go. The Spirit told me to go. What has the Spirit been telling you to do? And you have, and you have been hesitating. Hear it loud and clear, my brother, my sister. Obedience is the secret to empowerment. Obedience is the one consistent secret to empowerment. When you do what God has been telling you to do, then the Spirit will empower you. It doesn't matter who benefits. Don't worry about who is going to benefit by your obedience. It's immaterial. But obedience will empower you. The Spirit will be with you. The counsel, the word of the Lord will be with you. And I don't know who you are under the sound of my voice. Perhaps you have never really given your life to Christ. This is an opportunity to do so. Because unless you give your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit will not come to you. And if you have given your life to Christ and you have not asked for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, this is the time. You cannot live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to, the, to his disciples, Tarry ye, Luke 24, 49, Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And if you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then pray in tongues. Don't only speak in tongues for two minutes in church. No, spend time praying in tongues. And also ask for this gift of interpretation. So that sometimes after you've prayed in tongues for some time, the spirit, gift, the spirit of interpretation will tell you what you have been praying about. That, that's, that's what spiritual life makes, well, that's what makes spiritual life very exciting. Because you are in touch with God and the things he's saying to you, you are seeing them come to pass in your life. And so you are confident your faith is growing because you have learned to trust God and, what, and the communications that he gives to you. If there's anyone right here in this auditorium or under the sound of my voice in an online platform, you have not given your life to Christ. This is your opportunity to give your life to Christ so that great things will begin to happen in your life as the Holy Spirit takes you on that journey of life to empower you, to reveal his will to you, to show you the great things God has planned for your life. Is there someone here? Just raise your hand and I'll pray with you. Is there someone here this afternoon? Just, or this morning? Just raise your hand. Is there someone here? Just, yes, just raise your hand wherever you are. You, know, you, you, you need to, to give your life to the Lord. Yes, God bless you, my brother. Is there someone else? Is there someone else? You know, it's, it's an awesome, awesome. I, if we had that time, I can tell you so many stories of my life with divine communication. It's amazing. It is just so amazing. And you can have your own stories. How God led you through different circumstances and situations. And, and empowered you in your life. Is there someone else this morning? Just raise your hand where you are. If you have raised your hand, just, just stand to your feet and come. Let us pray. Come and let us pray. Come very quickly. Come very quickly. Come very quickly, wherever you are, please come. Yes. An awesome experience awaits you. It is so awesome to surrender your life to Christ and see the Lord God Almighty begin to commune with your spirit. It is awesome. It is so, so awesome. I say to people, I heard that voice. June 28, 1970. That's how I got saved. 
He said to me, go and write your name down. That's where you belong. And that voice and I, we have been traveling ever since. Ever since. Everywhere. It's awesome. And that can be your own testimony. As many as are standing here, just put your right hand to your chest. Okay? Put your right hand to your chest. You are entering an awesome experience. Just say with me, Lord Jesus, I ask you, to please come into my life and be my Lord and be my Savior. I believe with all my heart that you died for my sins. I believe with all my heart that you rose from the dead for my sake so that I will be saved. By your grace, I will follow you. I confess you now as my Lord and Savior. I repent of all my sins. By your grace, I will not go back to them again. Holy Spirit, please come into my life. Give me courage. Give me boldness. Give me strength to stand for my God all the days of my life. Thank you for saving me. For in Jesus' name I pray. And all the people said, Amen. Okay, put your right hand on your head. Put your right hand on your head as I pray for you. Father, we are so grateful that there are people here and in the online community that you have drawn to yourself. Receive them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Wash their sins away, O oh God. Lord, seal them with the seal of the Holy Spirit until the final day of redemption that when their life is over, they will spend eternity with you. May your spirit guide them day by day. Open their inner ears, O oh God, that they may hear the voice of the Spirit of God and walk with him all the days of their lives. Thank you, O oh God, for in Jesus' awesome name we have prayed. Amen. Okay, shall we all rise? Shall we all rise? God wants you and I to walk daily with spiritual intelligence. And if you do not hear God, then open your mouth and say, Oh Lord my God, I cannot continue to be in darkness in my life. I want to hear the voice of the Spirit of God in my heart. I want to hear the communion of the Holy Spirit. I need the communion of the Holy Spirit in my life. Everybody needs the communion of the Holy Spirit. Big things, small things, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night, in the middle of the night, you need the communion of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the counsel of the Lord, that's what will stand. That's why you need spiritual intelligence. Because the counsel of the Lord will always stand. And the psalmist also said that the counsel of the Lord stands forever. In Psalm 33, 11, the counsel of the Lord it stands forever. And once you get that SI, you can, you can, put, you can put all your weight on it. I want you to say this prayer with me. Oh Lord my God, open my inner ears. Open my inner eyes. I want to see you. I want to hear you. I want to follow you. Give me the grace when I hear you to obey you. That you may empower me to do your will. Oh, yeah, say that prayer yourself. Say it very quickly. Say it very quickly. I want to hear you. And I want to do what you say. No matter what it is, I want to do what you say. That is the revival, my brother, my sister. That is the revival. When you are hearing the voice of God and you are doing what God is saying, that is the revival. The revival will have started in your life. Once you hear what God is saying and you are doing it, the presence of God is with you. For in Jesus' awesome name we pray. Heavenly Father, here we are. Oh God, only 12 people changed the world. And we are more than that. But they heard the voice of God in their heart. Oh God, do a new work in our hearts. Let the voice of Almighty God, through the communion of the Spirit, abide with each one of us in the name of Jesus. And Lord, if there be those who are yet... To receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. To receive the gift of tongues. 
Father, whatever is hindering them, I command it to lose now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, if there be any that are sick in their bodies, oppressed by devils, I stand on the authority of the finished work of Calvary. I command freedom now in the name of Jesus Christ. That the people of God will walk in the power of their God. To the glory of your holy name. We give you praise, O oh God. For you do awesome things in our lives. For in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen.